We now welcome Jalen Green onto the YouTube channel. Jalen, thanks so much for taking the time. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to talk to you about your recovery, which I believe is going pretty well, right? So you've been cleared for all football activities now. Yes, um, I got the doc's good grace, um, his blessing to be cleared back to playing football August 9th. Um, that was definitely huge news um, just to, you know, kind of hear from him that he feels comfortable with me back, you know, getting back out on the field and playing again. So, yeah, definitely a huge day. Yeah, that's great to hear. I know Jamie fans are excited about that. Obviously, last year you were incredible for the Dukes, 15 and a half sacks in just nine games. What's it been like this these last few months to get back to full health? And then I imagine it's just a lot of you, I guess, contacting teams and maybe your agent contacting teams and having a chance to play professionally. Is that sort of how it's looked for you? Yes, that's you know exactly what's been going on. Um, after, after the draft, um, you know, things, you know, ended up going how they went with me being unsigned and undrafted. Um, my agent, you know, he just kind of talked to me. He was just like, I want you to just focus on getting back fully healthy. Um, you know, the time will come, the opportunity will come. He's always kind of been confident that the opportunity will come. And, um, you know, but most importantly, I, you know, was the most important priority was my health. So, um. And I, I couldn't I couldn't disagree with that at all. So um, I I you know wanted to block out all of that noise and just focus on getting better, getting 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 back up to 100 <clears throat> percent. And um, you know that's what I did. And um, I kind of just you know trusted that my agent will you know he'll be in the ears, he'll send out updates, he'll talk to teams, which he has been doing. And um, you know just just now we're kind of just playing the waiting game, but also still staying ready. Yeah, I know the Breeze did a story on you. They mentioned some of those teams, but I guess have you heard heard back from many? What's sort of been the the process like contacting them? Obviously, I guess as they get ready to make roster cuts and things like that. Right. Um, all of it's been through my agent. Him reaching out to um everyone he sure. whatever um connect or you know connection he has through the teams, and um there's been good feedback from a few teams. I mean, honestly, I was just praying for one team. So to hear that there were a few teams that one um wanted to add me to their workouts list and will will work me out once they start workouts again. There were also some teams that um you know just wanted to wanted to get their cuts in and kind of reassess what they had going on. And then there were a couple of teams who wanted to relook and um just check me out again and see and uh, probably assess their needs as well too. And then there were some teams who you know flat out said no, but um it's very rare that anyone has interest from all 32 teams. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, not, 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 not discouraged by that at all, but yeah, definitely feel confident saying that I will get an opportunity to work out for somebody. That's great to hear. Yeah. So what does that look like for you in terms of a prep? I guess, are you just going through workouts sort of trying to stay in, in shape there for when the season starts? Yeah. So um, there's certain days throughout the week. I mean, every day I'm working out. It's yeah. just certain days we're, we're, we're just, you know, we're getting a little strategic now just because the phone call could come at any point, but um, there's certain days where I'm working with the D line trainer, getting, getting physical therapy in every day. And um, it's not necessarily the feel good stuff anymore. It's <laughs> pretty much another workout, <laughs> but um, yeah, physical therapy and then a lift, whether it's upper body or lower body. And then um, a day opposite of that, where I'm not meeting with the D line, uh, coach I'm meeting with my my trainer who um did was in the um article with the breeze mm -hmm. was mentioned in the article with the breeze yeah so are you I think they said you're bouncing between was it um Baltimore and then somewhere else was it Florida yeah so I'm I'm my home is in Baltimore um mm -hmm. uh, my trainer my trainer used to train me when I was in seventh grade when I was 13 wow when I first started with him and then I was working with him up until my sophomore year of high school he had got relocated to a um, facility called House of Athletes, who was ran by um, former NFL player Brandon Marshall. Yeah, and um, it's a really nice facility down in Florida. He um, he went down there and was working with a ton of um, high level athletes all in, from different sports. I guess there was some sort of disconnection between the two, and um, Coach Troy he found a new home called Symmetry Fitness, where they still. They still bring in a wide variety of athletes. I mean, they got MMA guys going in there, basketball players, football players, baseball players. Um, very diverse, 
kind of environment as far as like the different athletes that go in and out of there. Um, but yeah, um, once kind of honestly, we got reconnected, um, like right after the draft had happened and, um, just kind of, I, you know, I was moving out of my apartment. I still have my apartment in Harrisonburg and just trying to figure out what's next with, um, my support group and everything. And then my dad, you know, just, he wanted to get me reconnected with Troy. And I think, um, before I had gotten hurt, I had plans of wanting to go train with him to do my pre-draft prep yeah. anyway after the season. I wanted to get reconnected with Troy. But um, my dad, you know, pressed the issue, and we ended up getting back connected. And, um, yeah, so he that that's kind of where the Florida comes in. Some weeks he is based in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but he also – he's also training um, an Orioles baseball player. Okay. And, um he kind of goes on the road with them as they go and gotcha. whenever they're home, they're home. So whenever he, the Orioles are in Baltimore, we're typically in Baltimore back home. Okay. But whenever they're on the road, I usually go down to Florida and work with his team down there because he kind of has like a – he's able to run things even when he's not there down yeah. in Florida. And there's just good resources. And that son, that son will whip you into shape if nothing <laughs> else does. <laughs> yeah absolutely i've got family down there it's uh it's hot all the time it feels like it's brutally hot down there <laughs> yeah that's awesome though what have your your workouts looked like i guess what are you focusing on i know some of that obviously in the last few months was just getting back into shape getting healthy but now is it trying to be as explosive as possible what's sort of the focus for you as you get ready and then you had also had mentioned being strategic about it i, I guess some of that you don't want to go too hard and so you're not like sore or crushed for a, a tryout if that were to <laughs> pop up Exactly. Um, like just coming back from from a knee knee surgery, any any kind of surgery, honestly, like once you really start increasing the volume and intensity of those workouts, you you'll feel them afterwards. And um, mm -hmm. just as and um, I mean, we I've been exposed to some high intense workouts, some high volume workouts too. But there's still you know there's still specific things, specific angles, specific. Um, edges you know that you know you get in and out of playing football and doing any other things that you know we're just trying to expose myself a little bit to a little bit more now too but early on in the process it was all about one um getting better body control and understanding how where my body is in space which um the first few weeks first two weeks were tough um a lot of it was just we needed that foundational strength in a lot of areas that mm -hmm. Um, I just didn't have a lot of activation from. So early on, it was just a ton of whatever whatever we could do to get the glutes firing off, whatever we can do to get the core stronger, whatever we can do to get those quads really fatigued and working all the way and um, get those hip flexors loosened up, but also stronger and strengthened. And, um, you know, it kind of just seemed like early on, it was week by week progress where, damn, I'm like, damn, I'm feeling better. I'm able to own certain some of these exercises that I'm asked to do a little bit better than I was a week ago. And now we're at the point where I'm kind of seeing progress made day by day. So um, now what we're focusing on is real specific. Um, I think it's really just me focusing on dropping my knee over that toe and playing at a really low level, mm -hmm. which um, is, you know, kind of what makes me special and allows me to do some of the things I do being able to pass rush and play at such you know such a low pad level and um you know it just takes some time for the need to just get reps on get reps of being down uh being down there comfortable first you got to get a little bit comfortable which just means more strength in the quads more strength somewhere else we're at that point now we passed that point now we're at just you know the reps just making sure these reps are as clean and as perfect as we need them to be so um yeah the only way we really get better at that is just by doing it so I feel like we're in a good spot. I can't say I'm at a hundred, but I feel like we're really close. But I also think to say that to say that I'm still a hundred would also take me to play some football a little bit yeah. more too. So um just trying to trying to close that gap as much as we can before um before I gotta go work out. And um yeah, that's just kind of where we're at. That makes sense. Do you have an idea of when workouts could happen? Is that sort of up in the air depending on team? What's what's that like for your schedule? I know you mentioned kind of just just waiting for calls. Yeah, my I, I'll, I'll tell you what my agent said. He said it could happen tomorrow, could happen two weeks from now, could happen a couple months from now. Um, mm -hmm. But he told me that, you know, I'm doing everything that I need to be doing, should be doing, and just keep doing it. But um, honestly, honestly, for me, um, 
it not being tomorrow doesn't necessarily discourage me at all. I just I look at it as more opportunity to keep getting better and better, just so I can make sure I leave that impression that I want to leave. That makes a ton of sense. You've obviously got a, a great mindset about it. I was curious though during the draft or if you've watched preseason games, are there ever times where you're like, oh man, like I had twice as many sacks as that guy last year or something? Have you have you of noticed course. that you feel like you could go out there and, and certainly compete? Of course, of course. Um, like I, I can't sit here and lie and act like seeing some of that stuff isn't difficult. I mean, I'm human and I'm also, you know, a competitor and um I know what I'm capable of doing and you know, I want to, you know, I, I want to get back out on the field and yeah. I have teammates again and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, no, nah, I mean, I think I do have, you know, some really good friends, though, who um, who ha- who did. They 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 got to hear their names mm-hmm. get called and, you know, have that moment. And that was still even though I didn't get that. That was still like confirming for me, like knowing just how how hard they worked and. Mm-hmm what it took for them to get where they got going um, was, you know, definitely made me feel good and happy for them. But I also had a chance to, you know, talk with them and see what was going on. And um, I had one friend who's got drafted to the chargers. He played at Notre Dame and um, he's in, in the middle of, I guess they're done with camp now, but um, he called, I, we, we had a, we had a FaceTime call a few weeks ago and he was just, I mean, I didn't even ask for it. He was, and I didn't even, I don't think he know, knew I needed it, but he was <laughs> hyping me up and basically telling me that, you know, there's guys out here that I know you're better than, and <laughs> like, they're out here killing it. So like, I, mm-hmm. I know what you are capable of and I know that you can too. And um, like I said, I don't think he knew I needed that, but um, that was definitely a huge confidence boost for me. And that was just two weeks ago. So um yeah, nah, definitely been challenging watching the preseason games and, you know, seeing guys fight for their mm-hmm. their dreams and their opportunities. But um, just one of the messages my, my trainer drills home is pros, they have that ability to block out the outside noise and just focus on what they need to focus on and get better day by day. So mm-hmm. um, I've just been really trying to harp my head on that message and just apply it to every aspect that I can. Yeah, for sure. I guess Isaac Upu has a little bit of proof, right, that a uh, defensive end from JMU can can make a push at the league. Have you talked to him at all? I know he's, I guess we're talking Monday evening, so they've got the Lions 53-man roster cut will come at some point, but he's certainly in right. the mix to make that group. Have you had a chance to talk to Isaac during camp? Isaac and I, we've, we've been talking briefly throughout the preseason, but before the preseason, we did have a chance to chat and talk. And um, Yeah, no, nah, definitely, you know, the jam you guys can clearly ball. So kudos to Isaac for, you know, putting on a display and um showing what he's capable of, but also, you know, with what with, with jam you breathe a little bit. For sure. You mentioned uh wanting teammates again. Have you talked to any of the guys in the current Jamie roster at all about uh what they're going through in camp and I guess what's your contact like with some of uh, maybe those defensive linemen? Yeah, I, um I've reached out and talked to Lamar Thomas, um, mm-hmm. Daryl, um Julio, I, I talk to Julio a lot. I know yeah. he's not, not necessarily in the player player realm. His roles mm-hmm. pushed a little bit for the team this year, but I've talked to him a ton. And um, yeah, and I, I, I don't be surprised if you see fourteen walking out there at quarterback. Really? All right, a little, <laughs> little tease. I hear, I hear, uh, he made quite the impression with you. I know. I was curious too, just um, just having seen Alonza in practice. Beating out Jordan McLeod in camp last year is obviously a pretty remarkable achievement, even if McLeod ended up the starter for most of the year. Right. What is it about Alonzo's, I guess, game or leadership or whatever that makes him such a special player? Yeah, I I remember um, competing against him when he first came in that that spring, uh, the spring of what our first F- FBS season. Yeah. Um, and I just always remember, like, dang, he he he's calm, cool, collected, you know. And then he has like that um, very savvy, very savvy ability. And like, you know, he just has that savviness in his game style to where he can make like, you know, things aren't open. He can extend the play and make those extra plays. He's a, a, a threat in the running game. So like that changes the whole dynamic as well, too. But, um, you know, he, he he's talented. He's got a nice arm. Um you know, like as far as maturity and responsibility, he showed a lot of that early on. And um, like he was doing the right things, extra film, getting wide receivers to throw. Um, and he was doing that as a, as still a high school student, technically, just early yeah. in pro league. So um, I kind of always knew like, yeah, I think Zoe could be the future. Um, 
obviously didn't didn't go how all of us wanted it to go and I know it didn't go how he wanted to go last year in that first game but you know adversity um we we learn from it and I no doubt think you know sitting and um him 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 how that played out for him I know he he definitely learned his lesson and I think he's ready for it now but um yeah I, th- I think we'll be in good hands with Zoe at quarterback did you have any, uh, I guess, guys you went up against your JMU career in practice at quarterback that were particularly annoying? I know you're probably not getting a lot of uh, full contact sacks in practice, but any guys who were maybe able to elude some of that or or you thought you had them in pressure and they made a great throw during practice, anything like that? Yeah. Um, Zoe, Zoe was one of them just yeah. because his ability and that awareness when the pockets break down, when the pocket is breaking down, he can get out of there. Um, ben DiNucci, my freshman year, was <laughs> – he he wasn't I wouldn't necessarily say he's as mobile as though, but mm-hmm. he definitely was mobile and had some of that savviness in his play. And I was I mean, I was I was a, I was a baby out there, too. But um, yeah, getting after him was challenging. Um, we had Cole. I wish Cole was a great, phenomenal player, great yeah. pocket passer. But I think I didn't have too much difficulty getting after him. <laughs> um, Toddy was another one. Toddy was another one, too. Great, great competitor, great leader, and he he also knew when when it was time to go, it was time to go, and um, wasn't afraid to get out of there too. Yeah, they had some guys. Who they match you up against? I guess mostly uh, in practice at, at tackle. Were you going? To, was it Kidwell or was it somebody else on the other side? Well, you know it, that where I lined up always just to, just just depended sure. on the strength. So um, I I got whoever was in front of me, but a good amount of both. But um, yeah. Definitely, definitely felt like it was always an iron sharpening iron going against Kitwell and Tyshawn. Um, yeah. I know once, I'm not sure where Tyshawn is with um, his recovery. I know once he comes back, that's a huge asset being yeah. you know, gained again. So, but yeah, both of them really good players, but also early on, Liam. Liam and Raymond uh, Gillespie. Oh, I might yeah. Have said his last name incorrect, wrong, but. I felt like I learned a lot going from going against Raymond, especially um, just with those long arms. Um, he you was, know, yeah, you got, he was a big dude. He yeah, really you, gotta, you gotta change your approach. And I felt like that that kind of deep in the bag, for lack of a better term, going against him and figuring that out. And Liam as well, who, um, you know, he was obviously a great talent too. But um, all four of those guys, definitely over the years, just going against them and one-on-ones, trying to move, trying to figure, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work, and what works really well for me. Um, I was able to figure that out going against those guys. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think that's all I got. Congrats on the uh, the medical clearance and the recovery. I know Jamie fans, including myself, will be watching a lot of your highlights until uh, until you finally get that that camp invite or that tryout. Yeah, nah, definitely. I appreciate it. <laughs>